Welcome back, creeps. Hey, y'all. So, this past Friday, we learned that Dan from Real Life Ghost Stories passed away from an underlying condition. This was such a huge loss for the entire paranormal podcast community. And our hearts really go out to Emma and the rest of their family. Dan was an absolute gent. I had only chatted with him a handful of times about silly little things mostly. But we both spent like the entire evening that time, like randomly we just tuned into his Twitch channel and watched them play some horror game. And we were chatting back and forth, which was really nice. But like everyone else, I feel like listening to him reacting to Emma's storytelling is probably what made him feel like a close friend. So this week, in honor of the man himself, we're going to say a big how you do. I can't do it as well as he did it. <laughs> <laughs> and keep his wise words going. So this is why you should never play with Ouija boards. Yes. In honor of Dan. Yep. And his PSAs. Yeah. A big old PSA. So I'm going to start and just tell a, a brief history. There's a lot more to it than what I've taken down, but um, this will give you an idea of how they came about and how they started. So way back in 1891, a toy shop began advertising in newspapers, Ouija, the wonderful talking board, a magical device that answers questions, quote, about the past, present and future with marvelous accuracy. Marvelous. Never, <laughs> never failing amusement and recreation for all the classes. Not just the poor or the rich. <laughs> a link between the known and unknown, the material and the immaterial. It was originally priced at a dollar fifty, which I think was quite a lot. Like you know, it's yeah, no can't get anything for price, you yeah, know? you can't get anything for a dollar fifty nowadays. Okay, old lady. <laughs> <laughs> was that an old lady thing to say? Yep. <laughs> Um, the dollar menu is not even a real dollar menu anymore <laughs> I remember when it was a nickel <laughs> I remember when cheeseburgers were a nickel <laughs> So anyway, spiritualism was like all the rage back then Yeah But the typical approach and, uh, But the typical approach is to communication was either Speak the alphabet and wait for a corresponding knock Or automatic writing or other long-winded ways about things oh wow i didn't know about the knock thing yeah that was like that's interesting yeah if you go back and like look read the stories of like the fox sisters and like famous mediums from way back when mm. that was generally there you know so you can imagine how long a seance would take oh yeah you know you're all the way up at z and it's like oh wait shit was that <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean that you was that one that. knocker yeah so the ouija board I say Ouija. I honestly don't know if that's right. Uh, I know like a lot of people say Ouija, which is how it looks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are so many ways to say that. Yeah. Like that one YouTube video that had all those. Yeah. A pronounced... Ouija board. Yeah. Which <laughs> one of our patrons commented on our one of our posts as well. I think we've made this reference before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I did link that video in our Patreon feed. <laughs> a Luigi board. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, the, the Ouija board was pretty much what Wi-Fi is to dial up internet, except for ghosts. That's funny. Ouija boards weren't actually created like in 1890. They had been around before, obviously, but it was only then. I think they were like in mass use in some like spiritual place in Ohio or something, right? Which sounds so strange. Yeah, yeah but it is. like they were quite popular in a very small group and an article made its way around about it. And this guy, Charles Kennard or Kennard, found out about them through this article. He approached some other investors, including Elijah Bond. I think there was like three or four other people. And anyway, they started to mass produce these boards so they became popular yeah bond's sister-in-law the other shareholder okay her name is helen peters she was supposedly a quote strong medium mm -hmm. what can she bench i don't know i can only <laughs> imagine big brawny old-fashioned lady 
Uh, she's a handsome woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what they're calling handsome woman. Yeah. She is said to be responsible for the name. They were struggling to come up with a name for this new board game. Yeah. Other than just the talking board, I guess. And she decided, let's just ask it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, right. And I think people, for the most part, figured that the, there was another story as well. Like it was supposed to be between the German and French words yeah. for hello. There's several uh, origin stories about the name of yeah. the board. So this, we actually found this out. <laughs> we, as in, I did all this research. No, I didn't. I just looked this up online. But this story actually came out when uh, Robert Murch started to research the history of the board and actually found a load of old letters from the shareholders to one another. And this was written in those letters. Oh, so this is legit. As legit as we can get. Okay. So anyway, they were struggling to come up with a name and she says, let's just ask it. And it spells out Ouija. Sick. And... Then when they ask what that means, the board replied, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Fucking weird. But Helen said that she was wearing a locket with a picture of a woman that had the name Ouija above her head in the locket. Okay. Weird. Weirder still. But I looked it up and this lady, Helen Peters, thinks whatever read the word Ouija actually picked it up wrong. Because what was written in her locket was Weida, right? Spelled the same except a D instead of a J. That was a pseudonym for this author from like the 1840s all the way up. She was like a big, strong feminist rights activist and novelist. Okay. And her pseudonym was just Weida. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't know whether Helen Peters thought, oh, the spirits in the room like read that and picked it up wrong or what, but. Anyway, that's how they came up with the name Ouija mm. or Ouija. So, but still, it was the board. It, yeah, it still came about through asking the board. So then they had to apply for a patent. All right. And this meant they had to take a trip to Washington to show the patent office that the board really worked. They brought Peters with them to make sure that it would. What? Yeah, so sure enough, the chief patent officer said, I'll give you your patent, but only if your board can spell my name, which they hadn't been told his name. <laughs> oh, they got their patent. What? Yeah. I mean, we have the boards today. So <laughs> yeah. Um, There was one theory that like, you know, the dudes had just done their research and happened to know this guy's name. Anyway. Yeah, but they didn't have Google. No, but they knew that they were going to the patent office. Yeah. So it could have just happened that whoever they were talking to was like, oh, yeah, it's run by. The receptionist was like, you can see Bill now. And yeah. And the guy's you know, like, spell my name. <laughs> B-I-L. Oh, my God. It's, it's right. Good thing it wasn't. His name didn't have like three L's or something. Yeah, yeah. So the patent was approved in 1891. And from there, the Ouija board took off. Where'd it go? I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was trying to move to the next sentence before you could just make a silly joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Kennard Novelty Company went from one small Baltimore factory to two, and then two in New York, and two in Chicago. And another one in London. Like, it was huge. But by 1893, Kennard and Bond had gone their separate ways. And the company was now in the hands of a William Fold. F-U-L-D. Okay. It's hard to say. I don't know what actually happened. But there was said to have been, like, public disputes and everything. Mm. Between all the different shareholders and Fold. Who came in as an employee. Like... Right, as they were getting off the ground with this thing. But it sounds like a real old-timey feud, anyway. Yeah. A Fold, lot of white gloves slapping. Yeah, right. So Fold was constantly called the founder of the Ouija board, even though he wasn't. And he never claimed that title. Yeah. But even in his obituary, he went down as the creator, I think. 
So he never went out and said, no, I'm not. He just let everything go. No, I'm pretty sure he did come out and say, like, look, I'm not. I just worked for the company and now I fucking own the company. But yeah, like, people weren't listening. Yeah. But Full died in 1927. Okay. After falling from the roof of a new factory, which he said the board told him to build. Strange. Super strange. And I'm sure there's a lot more in that. Yeah. But yeah, so. Don't trust boards. Still strange enough anyway, right? So the Ouija board success continued with the occasional boom in business when times got tough. Like whenever there was a war or during the Great Depression. In 1973, around seven years after it was bought by Parker Brothers, sales came to an almost complete standstill. Weird, why? What else happened in 1973? A certain movie. Oh, was that The Exorcist? The Exorcist came out, yeah. Oh. From that point, and only from that point. Nobody bought one. Yeah. Like, for years. Obviously, in recent years, it's become popular again. Like, a lot of people just buy them just for the fun of it. But yeah. it really went from being just a regular little parlor board. Like, it actually sold more copies than Monopoly. What? Yeah, for Not Monopoly. years and years and years. And it all of a sudden overnight turned into this, like, oh, you're a Satan worshiper. You have uh. one of those. <laughs> yeah, like it was even like in an episode of I Love Lucy. Really? So, yeah, apparently. Now, what? I don't know whether those episodes have been taken off because it's in it. I wonder if it was because I've seen all the ones on that they have on Hulu. I didn't see that. Yeah, well, I don't know, but it, apparently it was, like, in a lot of those type of programs, even, like, just regular... No like, shit. Saturday afternoon afternoon viewing and stuff, you know? And then at 73, they just took all that shit down. That I gotta find out. I gotta look through the catalog. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, that's a very brief history. Like, obviously, that dude, Robert Murch, has devoted a substantial chunk of his life to actually finding out the real history of it. Mm. So, if you are more interested... And I'll probably try and get one or two of his books further down the line as well. Maybe we can do like a, a more of a deep dive into this. But um, Max has had a stomach bug for the yeah. last day or so. Yeah. And he spent all day in bed on our burrito blanket, <laughs> just not moving, which is not like him at all. No. And then as soon as we started to record, he just came in here and he has a little spot that he likes to sit beside the laptop. The laptop's nice and warm, and it means he gets pets. Yeah, he's very needy right now. Loves his dad. Doesn't care very much for his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it's time to go to bed. Yeah. I emit the most heat, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now we have some stories. I don't know. Where did you get yours from? Uh, Reddit and this one website called The Occult Museum. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got most of mine off of Reddit and I actually read a Cosmopolitan article that had also just gone through Reddit and like selected a handful of pretty Pork decent ones. Porkchop loves Cosmopolitan. She does. She does. She really likes magazines. <laughs> so do you want to go with the first story? Okay. This one comes from Volda Bortron. Okay, true story. It's Halloween. 94. And I dropped acid around 5 p.m. 30 minutes later, I tell my friend Danielle, and she gets a mischievous look in her eye and says, Stop by the dorm room and we'll break out the Ouija board. This is a terrible idea. Straight I... <laughs> off the bat, this is like the worst idea I've ever fucking heard. Yeah. I'm game for anything, so I'm there about 45 minutes after I dropped. Just coming on. Gel tabs, really clean shit. So I'm pretty cognate, cognate, cogent, cogent. Spell it. C O G E N T. I, I think it means cognizant. Maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty cognate. <laughs> <laughs> Quick PSA there: don't drop acid, because then you can't spell cognizant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her roommate is there. We crack some beers, chat. And then get to it. I catch them shooting looks at each other. Playful. We're going to have fun with this kind of looks. I get the sense they're going to prank me because I'm on acid. Fair enough. 
No, not fair enough. <laughs> Nothing about this story is right. This guy is hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> we start and it's uneventful until she turns the questions towards me. Both of our hands are on the little magnifier and she asks, who do you want? And I can feel her guide the thing as she spells my name. What do you want? It or she spells out soul. I know what's up, but I'm happy to play <laughs> along. And she's cute. It's Halloween. Who cares? Then she asks the last question. Who are you? She spells out. She moves the thing to six. Then another six. And then she guides the magnifier to the third six. The second magnifier, the second the magnifier comes to a stop, blood, her own blood starts pouring from her nose for no reason. Not a drop or a trickle, but a fucking hemorrhage. One nostril. It started as one perfect drop, leaving one perfect line on her upper lip, but grew out of hand quickly. Remember, I'm on a, I'm on good acid, so this is just heaven for me. I start laughing as this chick and her roommate start looking at me like I'm the devil. They didn't really talk to me after that. It's funny, though. Well, it's not funny. That whole story was fucking horrific. And I, that guy might have genuinely been the devil. But um, that's not the only time we're going to hear about... Nosebleeds. Nosebleeds, yeah. Mm. So my first story is a less eventful one. Mm -hmm. But I still wanted to keep it in because, because I liked it. This is from... Reddit user Boxes and Foxes. There isn't very much to this story, but I feel like it's still worth telling. About two years ago, me, my boyfriend, and two of his friends got together for the day to hang out. One of his friends brought a Ouija board because the three of them had mentioned many times in the past their want to try it out. Towards the end of the day, we decided to go to a place about, about a five minute drive from where I lived at the time that supposedly haunted. When you arrive, there's a long dirt road that turns into a dead end with a large gate and a large wooded area for miles beyond the gate. We decided to go check it out, and we ended up just walking around for a few hours in the woods. As the sun went down, we brought out the Ouija board. I did not personally touch the board, but the other three did. I just sat to the side and watched. It's worth noting that they were being pretty disrespectful calling names, throwing things at the board, etc. Nothing much happened, just moved a few inches every once in a while. Although, in all fairness, it could have been one of them moving it. We packed up and left around midnight, and that was pretty much it. I had a dream that night, where I was in an all-white room, and a man I've never seen before approached me and told me something bad would happen in the future. I woke up kind of freaked out, and after that, I couldn't sleep very well for the rest of the night. Later that day, I was driving home from running errands when some idiot ran a red light and almost T-boned my car on the driver's side. Thankfully, I wasn't hit. I stopped just in time to avoid the whole thing. I was pretty shaken up, but again, thankfully, nothing happened. I ended up just going home and I fell asleep shortly after. I woke up a few hours later to my boyfriend calling me. He and his two friends from the night before got into a car accident. No major injuries, thankfully. Just a few bumps and bruises that left them a little sore for a few weeks. Unfortunately, the car was absolutely totaled, but at least they were unharmed. Nothing else happened, but it does make me wonder if that was some type of warning or, a, or just a really creepy coincidence. I like to think it was a warning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd say so. That's why I left it in, because I was like, Mm, that's exactly the kind of shit that I hear about. And I'm like, nah, that's enough for me to not mm -hmm. want to do this shit. Okay. This one's called I Can See You. I think we have the same one. Go on, tell her. Tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I was about 12 or 13 spending the night. Uh, the same one as you? Yeah. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I was about 12 or 13 spending the night at a friend's house, goofing around with the Ouija board with him and his sister, and we were getting all sorts of gibberish, plus words spelled out, just kind of scaring ourselves for fun, not taking it very seriously when we got the message. I can see you through the window. 
And then, I can see you through his eyes. Or something like that. There was just a small window in the basement room where we were. And just the backyard and woods past the driveway, visible through that window. We asked it more questions and it said, I'm under the car. So we somehow got up the nerve to go out with a flashlight and peer under the car, where we saw a huge black stray cat, which was hissing. We ran inside freaking out, and at that exact moment the power failed, and all the lights in the house went out. We just about actually shit ourselves. A few minutes later the power came back on, and we sat up till dawn that night, scared, and never played the board again. Well, I'm glad they learned their lesson. <laughs> I hope they cleaned up after themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking freaky, though. Cats, like, generally scare the shit out of me at night, like, because they're always, like, there when you least expect it. Like, you're putting rubbish in the bin or something. Yeah. There's a fucking cat behind the bin that just goes running out. <laughs> creepy bastards. <laughs> we have two. <laughs> that doesn't stop it from being creepy. So this next one is from Dad's Nut Milk. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> I'm just gonna assume that it's a guy who grows his own almonds or something <laughs> and yeah. makes his own nut milk yeah he does <laughs> one time I was playing with my Ouija board with my friend I'll call her R actually I'm gonna change that I'll call her M because it's easier for me to say for the sake of her privacy me and M were in the basement, and she wanted me to show her how to use a Ouija board. We were asking basic questions like, how old are you, and what's your name? And the board was answering without any problems. Eventually, the board spelled out, Z-O-Z-O. -Z and we hadn't even asked it a question. It just did it. So we were now supposedly talking to Zozo, the infamous Ouija board demon. I explained to M who Zozo was, and we continued talking to it, and I was kind of an idiot and decided I would attempt to aggravate Zozo by basically telling him he was not powerful and he didn't scare me. He claimed he couldn't do scary shit because he had a broken leg, so I accused him of lying. After about half an hour of me being really stupid, M asked the board, what do you want from us? This is when shit got creepy. It immediately spelled out e. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. All right, what did it spell out? Sorry. <laughs> see what I'm see what I have to put up with here. It immediately spelled out D I E. And simultaneously my nose started to bleed. We ran upstairs to tell my mother what had happened and she said it was probably a coincidence. To this day, that board doesn't work. And when I tried to use it, it only moves in a figure of eight around the letters. I had to purchase a new, a new board and I've learned my lesson about egging on the demons. He got he, lucky. He clearly didn't learn his fucking lesson. Yeah. Dad snot milk. Like if that shit happens, <laughs> you just leave it the fuck alone. Yeah. And like my first thought isn't, oh fuck, now I need a new one. You know, you yeah. just leave the fucking thing alone. Throw that away, burn it. All right. I haven't read this one. So, but I, 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 I took a gander at it. I, th I took a goose to it and <laughs> I saw a Zozo. So I was, I'm going to read it. Okay. My worst experiences are pertaining to Zozo. I know it's considered BS to many, but it isn't. In 92, my friend got a Ouija board for Christmas. We were eight at the time. I had never played one before, so we sat down playing with the planchette when s someone we thought spelled O-Z-O-Z -Z came through. It was okay at first. Then it went on saying that he would R-word and kill us. Jesus. It freaked my friend and I out, and we stopped playing. And said goodbye. Mind you, this was 92. We were naive kids. We had no internet. We had no libraries that would carry occult books, but the name OZOZ -OZ always stuck with us. 
I went on assuming she was pushing it, despite what it had said, which was definitely not in her character for an eight-year-old to do. She didn't have any mental problems or anything. She wasn't even an insane person. She was a normal kid. <laughs> she was a normal eight-year-old is basically what she's saying. Yeah. I played the Ouija again in 2004 with my husband's friend and his wife. The first person to come through was my husband's friend's mother. And let me connect the dots in my head. Husband's friend's mother. Husband's friend's mother. Okay. I always have to do that thing where I'm like connecting with my finger. Like I'm drawing on an invisible whiteboard. Anyways, his friend thought it was BS. So he asked a test question. What was your favorite drink? And it replied, grape soda. His mother passed away when he was 10, so no one knew his mom or her favorite drink but him. And it was grape soda? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he carried on asking a series of personal questions, and it was very peaceful and calming, even had him emotional. Then it says things like afraid, and it turned creepy and dark, saying it was going to kill his wife. And then O-Z-O-Z -O -Z started spelling out, and the planchette became erratic. Even up until this time, I never researched Zozo, and I'm pretty sure no one there knew that either. I think it was a good year or so later when I found out Zozo was actually something people encounter on Ouija boards. So I didn't know that, and neither did the group that I was with. Cool. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never know because you're always just still looking at your phone. Like, oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll probably have to do a deep dive on uh, Zozo at one stage. Yeah. That's a scary one, though. Yeah, it is. A scary old subject, Zozo. Right, this one is from Reddit user Turtle Shell Magic. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> or maybe it's Turtle's Hell Magic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My two best friends, M and L, for this story. And I played the Ouija board at M's house. It was going fine until M asked the spirit how it had died, and it said, murder. She asked how it had been murdered, and it said, not I. It gave its name as something older that I can no longer remember, and gave us a date in the 1800s. It started to get heavy. The whole room felt different. And the little thing on the board was ripped out of our hands and went across the room. We stopped playing immediately after that. M's mom died of cancer a week later. Very suddenly. Nobody knew. Probably a coincidence, but L's mom was hospitalized for a serious drinking problem not long after that. And then mine had an emergency hysterectomy the same week. I have since then experienced things that I don't think I would have without this experience. Voices, a dark shadow, footsteps. I wonder if I'm haunted sometimes still. And it's been nine years. Ooh. Ooh, nine. <laughs> <laughs> but that, again, like those things, it's kind of Zach Bagginsy to be like, are they connected? Mm. But sometimes you're like, oh, shit, though, maybe they fucking are, you know? Yeah. All right. This one's going to be very short. It's called The Wood Chipper Accident. My great aunt has never married. And when I asked why, my dad told me the story. Apparently, when she was 16, she had a pretty serious boyfriend. When she used a board, she asked if they would get married and it said no. She asked if they would break up. No. Asked if one of them would die, and it said yes. And when she asked which of them, it said goodbye. A week later, he was in a wood chipper accident at the mill where he worked. Jesus. Dun, dun, Talk about dun. grim. Yeah. Here's one, and I'm going out for a snack, because I'm hungry. Okay. This is called our first mistake. Her name's Michelle. Oh! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was actually going to say, is this about me? <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I had some unexplained things going on in the house we were renting. So we got a board so we could try to figure out what we were dealing with. Bad idea. 
The board was just a standard plain board. We used it one night to speak with, hopefully, our spirit. What we didn't realize is that the Ouija boards open the door for anything to come through and speak. The looking piece, I'm guessing the planchette, yeah. flew off the board near the end of our session, and we had no real answers to anything. We were speaking with something, but it was very evasive with its answers. Things got worse in the house, and we eventually broke our lease and moved. Radios and TVs going on by themselves, water running. After the board, things got bad. Voices, moving objects, and my wife says I got possessed one night. But I can't validate that as I was asleep. That's so weird. I wonder what he was doing. Yeah. Okay, so this one's from Eric L666. Hmm. This happened when I was in the United States Marine Corps in 1991 freaked me out i was living in a four-man room sitting reading a book while two of my friends were using a ouija board one of them had set up an old cassette walkman with speakers plugged into the headphone jack the phil the phil collins song i can feel it coming in the air at tonight not at night he's, he's written <laughs> the phil collins song i can feel it coming in the air tonight they had been conversing with a benign spirit when it suddenly spelled out, demon is coming. Oh, all over your face. <laughs> Immediately, as it hit the G, the song slowed down and slowed and slowed until it stopped, which sounded like the devil incarnate. I leapt up and said, fuck this, I'm leaving, and took off. Freaks me out to this day, even though I'm pretty sure the batteries just died at the perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like, I don't think that the batteries just died because I've never, like a CD player would just stop. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't slow down. Yeah. Record player, sure, but not a CD player. Yeah. That shit's freaky. I saw a TikTok uh, video where it was this guy getting um, like haunted, like his house was haunted. And he woke up first. His wife was like, he was still in bed and he started recording because... Uh, he heard the Alexa go off. Yeah, and his wife was still asleep, but it just started talking, and then uh, it started laughing. Oh no! And then the door to his bedroom opened, and that's when he freaked out and he woke up his wife. <laughs> Fuck that! Yeah, and when they woke up, uh, like the next video, because you know they're only like thirty seconds long or sixty seconds long. Okay. Um. That was the one where he went, where he started videotaping towards the basement and his wife was in the doorway with the dog. And then like, it just sounded like someone started running up the basement stairs. Oh, it's that guy. Yeah. So that video that we saw, there was a video bef right before that one. Oh, so that's, that's why they woke up. Yeah. That's how that's the night started. Freaky. Yeah. No way. Alexas are terrifying. Yeah, they can I, be. We have a Google Home thing, and I stopped using it because it was, like, just the worst thing ever. Yeah. But it, I am also kind of fucking freaked out by it. Yeah, because, like, say your house is haunted, it can make you, it can make things happen. Yeah. Like, pretty it's sure just, it can fuck with Alexa, too. Yeah, it's just a whole other platform for ghosts. Yeah. It's like another tool or toy for them. Yeah. Also, haunted TikTok is cool. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> All right. So this one's called The Horse. The Horse. The Horse. <laughs> My mom has warned me against using them, Ouija boards. Oh, okay. <laughs> due to her. <laughs> oh, I just realized what that sounded like. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking use a horse. Um, Jesus. My mom has warned me. Against... Are you saying horse or whores? Horse. All right. Like, nay. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay my mom has warned me against using them due to her own experience she used one at a friend's house when she was young i can't stop smiling because i'm thinking about <laughs> she's referring to a horse <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> nothing of consequence happened during the use of the board yet she noted that whatever ghost they were chatting with seemed to be violent and have it in for her she shrugged it off and left it in her car. On the way home, she hit and gruesomely killed a horse 
which appeared out of nowhere, running at her car in the middle of a city in the afternoon. What the fuck? Yeah. That's crazy. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Like, where did this horse fall from? Did I ever tell you, um, my cousin, Marcus, shout out, he was driving down the the main motorway at home, like in, in Dublin. And because I was saying I was driving down this road one day and I saw something off in the distance. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, what am I looking at? And as it got closer, it was a golf ball. In the very middle, like, or maybe I was in the fast lane, I don't know. But it literally was just bouncing down the road, like, whoa, big, huge bounces. And as I realized what it was, I was like, oh, fuck. And I thought it was going to hit my car. It landed right in front of my car and just kept bouncing over. Whoa. I was like, that's nuts. So I was telling Marcus about it. And he was like, I saw that golf ball. (laughs) No, no, no. He was like, did I never tell you the time when a deer was just running down the motorway? (laughs) (laughs) He was in the same spot, I'm pretty sure. He was driving his car mm-hmm. and this poor deer had like come out of the woods or wherever it was and was just gunning it down the motorway it against all this traffic. Meeting. Like, yeah, 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 poor guy. Anyway, this one is from Rooster Culhane. Sounds like a 1940s gangster. If yeah, ever heard them. Hey, Rooster, we got to get out of here. Nobody takes over for Rooster Culhane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> The in high school, in your head, <laughs> <laughs> that you don't share. <laughs> in high school, a couple of friends, my my friend's mom and myself, were talking about a local building being haunted. It's a soil conditioners that sells dirt, bark, and other landscaping goods. Rumored to be the location of a murder years before. The mom worked there, so we decided to break out the the board and give it a shot. Mm. I had never used one before, so I was skeptical from the jump. The place is essentially a large warehouse with tall metal racks. Think Costco or Home Depot. Okay. Stacked with bags of dirt and manure and bark. Weird. And other things like ceramic flower pots. Mm. The board was glow in the dark, so we kept the lights off. Oh, great. I learned earlier that Hasbro actually only made these for a long time. These glow in the dark boards. They brought out the like original style uh-huh. only in like the last few years because the demand was coming back for it. Oh, so like, oh, OK. So the glow in the dark one was apparently the only one that you could get for oh. a while, like from major stores. Anyway. The board was glow in the dark, so we, so we kept all the lights off. Once we got going, it started moving around, and I was freaking out already. We asked if something was there to let us know, and there was a loud bang that seemed to come from the rafters on the other side of the warehouse. Every question that followed was met with a similar bang from a various location in the warehouse, sometimes close, sometimes far. The last question asked was, if it meant us harm, and the thingy already on the no, the thingy being the, the planchette, mm-hmm. already on the no answer, did not move. The question was repeated and immediately followed by the closest noise yet. It seemed right on top of us. So we decided to ski fucking daddle. <laughs> <laughs> As we were rushing out, we flipped on our flashlights and saw one or two of the large pots fall from the racks and heard what we would later find to be 40 pound bags of bark dropping to the ground whoa there was also a slow low grinding noise that when my friends returned the next day was a sledgehammer that had been dragged through the dirt covered cement floor standing straight up in the air with drag marks but no footprints near whoa i pretty much believe in ghosts now and, (laughs) and slept with the lights on for a week well, Rooster Culhane. I still sleep with the lights on. Yeah, it's true. That was fucking nuts. Yeah. The sledgehammer, like, though. Big, heavy ass things. Yeah. I remember the first time I ever came across a sledgehammer. Like, my granddad was like doing construction. Yeah. And I couldn't lift it. And I just thought, you must be the strongest man in the world to be able to lift this. But they are heavy, though. Yeah. All right. This is called 24 June 1987. My girlfriend told me the story about an experience she had with a Ouija board while in high school, sometime in 86. 
She had a friend named Johnny who was suffering from CF or some other debilitating illness who had recently been hospitalized as a result. Both she and her friend Shelly visited Johnny regularly in the hopes of keeping his spirits up and for a quick recovery. One night after visiting Johnny, they were at Shelly's when they decided to try out a Ouija board. After a while, they started communicating with a spirit who seemed to know a lot about them and that it really shouldn't. After some banal questions about boys and general questions one would expect teenage girls to ask, my girlfriend decided to ask about Johnny and his condition. The board quickly spelled out, 24, June, 1987. Johnny won't have to worry anymore. And went to say goodbye. My girlfriend and Shelly were so convinced that board was giving them a date for recovery that they actually wrote the message down and sealed it in an envelope. The following year, on 24 June, it turned out that Johnny indeed no longer needed to worry about his condition. It was the day he died. That was prem- premonitive? Pre- premoni- Premonition? Yeah, those like forewarning yeah. messages are probably like some of the creepiest things out of the Ouija boards. Yeah. Like any, and they're never good. Yeah. Never. No. All right, I have one more, and then I have. A little bonus after that. A boner? Oh my god. One of us needs to be mature here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this one is from Reddit user Gotsby or Gotsai29. Sick. Once, right after my ex had lost his friend in an airplane accident, accident we took the Ouija board out to use it. She was very present. She was very scared and alone and desperate for communication. We stopped using it and immediately I felt this presence in the corner of the room. I closed my eyes to take a deep breath. Suddenly, the pointer started moving rapidly around and going too fast to spell out the words. It was terrifying. I refused to use the Ouija board again. I immediately felt exhausted, completely and utterly drained. I lay down and had a nap. I was asleep for exactly 30 minutes. I woke up and bolted out of bed. I closed my eyes for a second to adjust myself to where I was and I saw this spirit slash skeletal thing in the corner of the room. It suddenly rushed at my face and started screaming at me with a big gaunt mouth. I opened my eyes and started screaming at my boyfriend to get it off me. I could feel it so oppressive and aggressive, trying to get on slash in me. I ran from the house, screaming and shaking. I don't think I ever used the Ouija board again. One day, it disappeared from my bedroom. It completely vanished. I have never found it. I have no explanations for what happened to it. Whoa. Yeah. That's intense. There was actually another one that I read, similar to the... Fuck, and I don't know why I didn't copy. I was meant to copy it in. But it was similar to your one where it was like in a dorm room or whatever. Mm -hmm. And these people were all kind of hanging around or whatever. And the typical skeptical one was like, oh, this is all bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually they were like, well, you do it then. Yeah. Try it out for yourself. And he asks it something and it responds. And then he's like, this is bullshit. I'm going to keep doing it. (laughs) (laughs) And then the next time he asks something, as the board responds, the lights go out and the fire alarm goes off in the dorm and they all have to leave. But when they come back like 20 minutes later after they realize it was a false alarm, the board was just gone. Hmm. Nobody knew what happened to it and the room was locked when they left. That's it's just strange. just fucking disappeared. Yeah, that was basically the story. I don't know why I didn't copy it in, but anyway. Okay, I have two stories that seem pretty fucking good. Okay, cool. All right, and these are going to be the last ones because I'm going to have the final say. All right, all right. This one's called The Midnight Demon. I've shared before, but I will share again. My stepdad is a kind of man that doesn't lie, ever, which is why I believe a story about a Ouija board experience he had when he was younger. He said he had friends over and had a Ouija board and they wanted to play. After a bit of playing around, they made contact with a being that said it was a demon. His friends were asking it questions, but he said the thing pinpointed him. It told my stepdad it would visit him again later after midnight. 
thoroughly freaked, they put the board away. My stepdad fell asleep and with dead seriousness said he was woken right after 12 by it. Now the demon had told them its name, but my dad, my stepdad refused to tell me. He was genuinely afraid. Anyway, he said this thing woke him up. It was sitting at the end of his bed, grinning. He said it was small and evil as fuck looking, just grinning at him. The thing told him his first child would die, and it left. My stepdad said afterward that he tried to get rid of the board. He first threw it out with the trash, but it didn't work. He said a few days later, a little boy that he had never seen in the neighborhood showed up at his door with the board. He handed it to my stepdad and said, this is yours, and left. So now, super freaked, my dad tried to burn it, but it wouldn't catch fire. The fire kept dying no matter what he did. So he dug a very deep hole, put the board in it, placed a Bible on top, and buried it. He's not seen the board since. As far as what the demon predicted, it came true. His first wife miscarried at three months. I wholeheartedly believe my stepdad's story, and it's why I never got a board or messed with one. Plus, they're very, very banned in my parents' home. (laughs) I'm not surprised. That's (laughs) fucking terrifying. And the last one which is a strong message to close out the episode as to why you shouldn't touch these things, folks. This one's called The Exorcism. Oh, shit. Last summer, I stayed for a couple of weeks in a parish with a priest who had a case that involved a Ouija board. A young man came into his office a few months before we talked and told Father X that he had been to three other churches and they turned him down or wouldn't believe him. So he went to the Catholic guy. His grandmother had gotten him a Ouija board about a year ago. He began playing with and got into contact with something. He began to feel the urge to use the board more and more often. It got to the point that if he wasn't using it multiple times a day, he would become he would begin to become extremely ill, like loss of physical strength to do anything except grab the board. It was at its worst when he began seeking help with churches, primarily because his parents didn't believe him. Father X went to his house, trying to explain to the parents that the supernatural is in fact real and there is proof in what is happening to their son. After half an hour, he convinced them to allow him to bless the home and take the Ouija board. When he got back to the parish, he attempted to burn the board. However, it simply wouldn't burn. This is even after pouring gas on it. He then tried to tear the board up, but couldn't even make a scratch on it. All of this disturbed him because it was, cheap, it was a cheap board, like something you buy at a toy store. In the end, he ended up saying a minor exorcism, blessing the board, and then tried to burn it. He said it went up in a matter of seconds. Anybody who thinks these boards are just games are grossly mistaken. Personally, it seems to be too much of a risk. The grave dangers far outweigh any perceived benefit. Wow. Yeah. I think that's a very strong one to finish up the stories on. Yeah. Are you ready for this bonus bonus round? Yes. Wait. Yes. Hang on. Yeah. (laughs) Why did the chicken get a get a Ouija board? Why? Because I wanted to cross to the other side. To contact the other side. Oh. Oh, How do you communicate with the spirit of a Viking warrior? (laughs) Viking warrior. With a Norwegian board. Oh, Ah, ah. I love that one. (laughs) I fucking love that one. Norwegian board. In desperation, I've been trying to meet girls through my Ouija board. Unfortunately, they keep ghosting me. Ah. (laughs) Why was the landlord upset after playing with the Ouija board? Why? He didn't know there were so many people in the building who weren't paying rent. Oh, Ah. capitalism. (laughs) The biggest joke of all. (laughs) I tried using my Ouija board and it spelled out, ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. It must have been a BG board. Oh! (laughs) How does Mario contact the spirit realm? Like Super Mario? Yeah. Uh... With a Luigi board. Oh Come on, that's God. right. Oh my God. How the fuck did I not <laughs> yeah, know that? On. Jesus Christ. 
Instead of a instead of using a Ouija board to talk to ghosts, I use a pile a pile of window cleaners. It's my squeegee board. Oh my god! <laughs> He's actually the worst. These are fucking funny. And this is off a website called like Scared Mommy or something. ScaredMommy.com. ScaredMom. Yeah, I feel like all of these are just bars that a goth rapper would use. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, this sounds grim. I like Ouija boards. It's the only game I could still play with my grandma. Oh. oh. <laughs> After death joke. Can we stop with the Ouija puns, please? No. I'm getting bored of them. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I use a Ouija board as a chopping board. That's how I make my soul food. Ah. <laughs> See what you did there. Okay, last one. Okay, now there's two more. Okay. I tried asking a Ouija board for the name of my future wife. The planchette kept moving from H to A and back. <laughs> Savage. And the, last one, the last one. Alphabetty Spaghetti makes a handy Ouija board for contacting people who've passed away. Uh, ah, 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 Alphabetty you Spaghetti. You get it. You get it. All right, so there you go, guys. Yeah, this was our episode. Yeah. Just trying to keep the good word of Dan going. Yeah. Do not fuck with Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that you take away from him is that you do not fuck with Ouija boards. Yeah, absolutely. As far as we're aware right now, I did reach out to a couple of other podcasts just to find out if there was any fundraisers or anything like that. But um, as of right now, all I know is that Emma and the family have just requested that you give them some space and not to go starting up any um, GoFundMes or anything like that. So yeah. I think let's just keep with that and respect what their respect their wishes. Yeah. And when they're ready, they'll let us know if there is anything at all that we can do to mm -hmm. help them or charities that, you know, Dan would have approved of or whatever. Right. I think right now the best way to um, move forward is just I mean, the normal rules of etiquette when someone is grieving the loss of a loved one is just don't pry. Yeah. Don't ask unnecessary questions because it really isn't our business. We just yeah, love just, Dan and this is just our way of honoring him. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, go listen to all of Real Life Ghost Stories. Yeah. There's, I think, the guts of two, three years worth of stuff up there. And it's all fantastic. I'm pretty sure... Almost all of our listeners have come directly from <laughs> we caught like overspill because yeah. Emma and Dan have been really supportive of us in the past. So, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Yeah. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Bye. Bye. So, Ouija boards were Ouija boards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, now I'm doubting myself. It's the power of Phil Collins. Will make you doubt yourself. Yeah, no, it is tonight. It is tonight. Fucking knew it. I love that song. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> Soil conditioners that sell dirt. Oh. <laughs> what? Soil conditioners that sells. It's a soil conditioners that sells dirt, bark, and other landscaping goods. Hold on. Sorry. Not a single fuck given. He's at fucks. What's that noise? Thank you.